Hi friends, in this video, we will try to understand how to compute year to date, which is also called as YTD, quarter to date, which is called QTD, month to date, which is MTD, week to date, WTD, and to display the data for the current date today. Now we can do this using relative date filter, or we could create a parameter and calculated field to achieve this. But let's understand what is YTD. It is nothing but to show the performance or to show the statistics of a business from the beginning of the year. That is from the first day of the current year up to today, up to the current date. Similarly, if it is quarter to date, then it is from the beginning of the quarter up to the current date. If it is month to date, it is from the beginning of that particular month up to the current date. Week to date, then it is from the beginning of that particular week up to the current date. Current date, of course, means today, as of today. Okay, so now um, to understand this better, I'll just take you to the calendar. So today is uh, the, the day that I'm recording this video. It is 11th. 11th of May. The day that I'm recording this video is 11th of May. So year to date will be from the beginning of this year until 11th of May. Q quarter to date, Q to D will be from the beginning of the quarter. Now what is a quarter? Jan, Feb and March come under one quarter. April, May, June is another quarter. July, August, September would be a different quarter. October, November, December is another quarter. So a calendar year is divided into four quarters. Or if you take a fiscal year, that is also divided into four quarters. Calendar year is from Jan to December. Fiscal year would be from April 1st of a given year to 31st of March of the subsequent year. Okay. So however you take, collection of three months is called as a quarter. Quarter to date, therefore, would mean the performance of the business from the beginning of that qu uh, uh, quarter, which is 1st of April, until the current day, which is 11th of May. Month to date would be from the beginning of that particular month until the current date. Week to date would be from the beginning of that week. And week starts on Sunday. Please do remember that week starts on Sunday until that point in time. Okay, and today is, of course, the data for that particular day on which we open the graph or the report. So with this understanding, let's see how to do it in Tableau. I will show you using one very easy method that is relative date filter. Uh, for that, let me go ahead and customize the date and represent the month and the day and the year. So we have data starting from 3rd of Jan 2020 up to 30th December 2023. Now I'm using the inbuilt superstore file and the version of Tableau I'm using is 2023.1. So I have data for 2023. But if I say YTD, it should be from the beginning of the year up to the current date. That means only till May 11th. Okay, it's supposed to show me the data up to 11th of May. Let's say we are looking at the profits here. Similarly, if I say quarter to date, accordingly it has to change. So how do we achieve this? Simply take order date into the filters shelf and select relative date filter option. When we go with relative date filter, we can choose year, quarter, month, week, day, anything of our choice. And from within this, we can choose exactly what we might want to see. Suppose I select year to date, the chart will get updated accordingly. Let me click on OK and look at this. This is year to date from the beginning of the year. That is 2023, 1st Jan up to 11th May 2023. You can aggregate this data the way you want. You can present it however you want. Now I'll go ahead and show the filter. Once we show the filter, it appears on the right side. And here, when the user clicks on this, even the end users will be able to see it. When they click on this, they can choose exactly what they might want to see. Suppose I change this to quarter to date. Look at the chart getting updated. 1st of April 23 up to 11th of May 23. Suppose I choose month and select month to date. Look at that. First May to 11th May. Suppose I select week. 
beginning of the week, which starts on a Sunday, that is 7th of May 23, up to 11th. And if I go to days and select today, look at that. Yesterday, tomorrow, because we have data here, it will come. Suppose you have to look at the data for the last 30 days. This is also something you might come across a lot. Um, show the performance of the business in the last 30 days. Finish. Show the performance of the business in the last 45 days. The performance of the business in the last 60 days. You can notice the chart getting updated as I make, as I apply this filter, make changes to this filter. So again, we can go back to here and go to here to date. Okay, however you might want, you can present it. Now the date granularity, you can keep changing it. You can have the chart at year level. So this is year to date information. This is quarter to date information. Look at the number changing month. This is month to date and you can go and check week. This is week to date and you can go and check today. This is the profit made on 11th of May. So using relative date filtering, very easily we can present exactly whatever we might want to present in the chart and in whatever format you would want to present it. The other way of achieving this is using calculated fields and parameters. So in this method, we'll create a parameter. Let's call it date level. It's supposed to be of data type string and a list of values are, are to be provided, like whatever the user has to be able to select. Year to date, quarter to date, week to date. Uh, okay, let me put month to date, week to date, and then I will also give today. Okay. Now, whatever you specify over here under value, you need to use the exact same thing in the calculation. Whatever you specify under display as, which you can even edit and, and, you know, display it in a different way. For example, year to date. Okay, this is how it will appear to the end user. So this is what you will use in the formula. And this is what will appear to the end user. I'm not making any changes here. I'll just leave it as YTD. And okay. So the parameter is created, which we should right click upon and display on the screen using the show parameter option. Depending on what the user selects, we are supposed to show the information at that level. Now for this purpose, see we have defined a parameter and we have displayed it, but we have not yet used it anywhere. We have not associated it with this chart in any way, right? We need to do it through a calculated field. But to understand how that calculation works, we need to understand how date trunk works because we will be using date trunk function to achieve our purpose. So let me just go here, create a calculated field to demonstrate date trunk. So date trunk is a function that will truncate the date to the desired level that you specify. Suppose I say year, which date would I like to truncate order date? So I'll drop it there. Okay. Now here you might have noticed something called as date part, which came up. This is basically the date part. Okay. Now date part is case sensitive, which means everything that you give should be in small case, lower case. And it should be a singular word. Okay. If I have to um, truncate the date to month level, and if I specify months, it wouldn't work. It should be month. Okay, so it's a singular word, year, quarter, month, day, week. Okay, if you have time, then hour, minute, second, whatever you want, you can give. So if I, here, date part is uh, something that you will come across in a lot of date functions. Date part, remember, whenever you're specifying it, is supposed to be enclosed in single quotations, all lowercase, and singular word, not plural. Okay. If I truncate the date to year level, what will happen? Let's see. First, I will show you order date. We know that we have data for different years in Superstore. And when you drill down, it takes you to the quarter level. Again, when you drill down, it takes you to month. Further, when you drill down, it takes you to day. So this is how it is presented. Okay. Now, if I use the truncated date, which was truncated by year, 
Okay, you will notice that even though I drill down, it doesn't show me all the quarters because it has been truncated at year level and it does not have information stored at quarter or month or day level. That is why it will just show you the first quarter, first month and the first day. So ultimately, these numbers are not changing. You can notice that this is the profit made by the business, which is being presented at year level of detail. And even though I drill down, it's not changing because this is truncated by year. Okay, this year is truncated by year. Now, let me change it. And this time, I will truncate it by quarter. Okay, so once we truncate it by quarter, let's see to what extent it will go. Year level, okay. And when I drill down, it goes up to quarter because now it is truncated at quarter level. Further, you can't go. Okay, this is the quarterly profit. And when I drill down, even though it's showing the first month of that quarter, visually it's displaying it, but the numbers are not changing. This is the profit made by the business in that quarter, irrespective of the month. Okay, it is the first month and the first day that gets displayed if we drill down. Otherwise, Remember, it, is, it has truncated the data by quarter and quarterly profit is what is stored in this field now. Okay, so that is the purpose of date trunk. It truncates, <clears throat> it truncates the date to the desired level. Year, quarter, month, whatever you want. So now I'm going to build a calculated field over here to display the information truncated at a certain level of detail. So I'll just call it date Okay, let's say data for the date level that is selected by the user. But I'll not use a parameter yet. Just let's truncate it by year and see it first, okay? This is our formula. Let's try to understand it. So we are looking for information. Basically, we are setting the time period here, okay? Uh, we are looking for information where the order date is greater than or equal to year part of today. Now, what will this do? It will truncate the date to year part of today, which means it will take the current date. Today is a function that will return the current date and it's going to focus on the year part of today. So if it is greater than or equal to 2023 and less than or equal to the current date. Okay, less than or equal to the current date. So up to today, from the beginning of 2023 up to today is what we are going to get. Okay. Let me show this to you. I'm going to take this into the filters shelf or we'll do one thing. Uh, let's build a chart accordingly. I'm going to create a chart that will be customized to show the month and the day and the year. And now I'll show you the result of that calculation. Look at that. For all the other dates, which are not from the beginning of the year to the current date, it is false. So where will this become true? It, it is false. It's still false. It will be, become true from 1st of January 2023, as you can notice. Here it has become true. Okay. Up to the current date, until the current date, which means until today, which is 11th of May 2023. And again, beyond that, it is false. Now, generally, we wouldn't have data, but here, because I'm using inbuilt superstore, I have data until the end of 23. Otherwise, only till here you would have. Okay. So, this is basically returning us year to date. So, now, if I change it to quarter to date, will it change? It wouldn't change because we have not done that. We have not used this parameter in the formula yet. We are just seeing whether or not the logic that is written in this calculation works. And we can see that it works. Now, I need to update this formula by making use of the parameter here. So if the date level parameter is selected as YTD, you could use either single or double quotes here. It doesn't matter. If it is selected as YTD, then we need this data. Okay, if it is selected as YTD, then we need this data year to date. Otherwise, else if the date level is selected as QTD. What if it is selected as QTT? Then what to do? Then same thing. You have to do the same thing. However, you will truncate it 
by water. Okay. I have another condition. What if the user selects month to date? Then just copy the formula. Same thing. In if it is MTD, then we will truncate it by month. Now, what if the user selects week to date? Then same thing. Repeat. Copy the same formula and paste it. WTD, then it is week to date. And what if I have to see the data for today? I'll just paste it. And I will truncate it to day level. Okay. After capturing everything, we'll just end it. So this is how we build the formula. Same thing. And I'm just repeating the whole thing. I just repeated it multiple times. But at each level, I changed this option and the date path. The option in the parameter and the date path. That's it. Okay. So now when I click on OK, I'll remove it from here and take it into the filters shell. Look for only the true values. Okay, look for only the true values. Now you can see the chart getting updated. Whatever data we might want, we can present it like that. Now look at this. From This is YTD. So it is from the beginning of the year until the current date. What if I change this to QTD? From the beginning of the quarter to the current date. What if I change it to MTD? From the beginning of the month to the current date. WTD? from the beginning of the week to the current date. And today is for that particular day. Okay, let me just check this. I didn't change this over here in the formula. This is supposed to be today. I just left it as QTD, copy paste error. Okay, because I had copied this and I kept pasting it everywhere. That was the mistake. Okay, let's apply, check, worked. All right, so for, each date level that is selected here, chart is getting updated and data is getting displayed accordingly. Now you could show the information the way you want. You could roll it up like that. Okay, year, year to date total value, quarter to date total value, month to date value, week to date value, and today, the current date. Okay, thank you friends. I hope uh, this was helpful. I hope you all understood both the ways of achieving this. I think I personally feel relative date filter is the best option because you can, you know, the user can get a lot of other options apart from just year to date. Whatever they might want to see, they can look at by just changing this option here, the filter, and then choosing from the various radio buttons that are available here. This would be my personal preference. However, if your client insists on doing it uh, through a calculated field using a parameter, you can do it like this. So if you are using relative date filtering, you might have to educate your client a little bit. You might have to give them some sort of a KT so that they can understand how these things work. But if you're doing it through a formula, then all they have to do is select an option here. So this, this pretty much everybody can do. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for your support. Uh, please do extend your support the same way you have been doing. And uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.